Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting a Business Building a Brand vlog. This one, big number 94. Now, I want to get to all these questions. We had said, last video I asked for questions from you guys and you guys have some great questions and I'm excited to get into those. And that's what this video is primarily going to be. But before that, I would like to just catch you up to speed on some important information. First things first, Pete and Pedro. Last week I was all nuts. <laughs> we got our shipment, they found the shampoo, and we have another big shipment on its way. Next week I actually go and um, I actually signed my lease for the big warehouse that I'm getting to store Pete and Pedro, which is exciting. It's also a little bit nerve wracking. The weirdest thing about the, the office or the, the warehouse is that it is the same type of warehouse or it's owned by the same company that my gym was in that failed. And so I've got a lot of weird memories. Like I walked into this place and it, it's really close to the, to the studio. It's like 2.8 miles away, but I walk in and it was like deja vu. And it took me a second just to kind of emotionally get my, my grips and my bearing because it literally is identical inside to my old space that I had the gym in. And so that was weird, but I'm really excited. It's a great space. It has a loading dock, and I'm going to be able to store like tons of products. Um, so everything with Pete and Pedro was good, promoting it like crazy, getting ready to ramp that up and, and grow it um, like I know that I can because it's incredible products. I am also in the process of developing a new website. One of the comments last week was, Yo Alpha, Pete and Pedro, the website, it looks tired. It's not real fantastic, and I totally agree. The other thing that I'm doing with Pete and Pedro is getting it off of WordPress and WooCommerce and on to Shopify. And so I'm in the process of getting a new site laid out, designed and developed, and it should be, I'm hoping like three weeks. Um, I'm hoping like three weeks. It could be possibly four, uh, but it's, we're using the same developer that we use for T. Shanley on the new site. Um, to give you an update, we've been live for almost like a month now with the new website for Tiege Hanley and things are really great. We're, we're, we're having all sorts of you know, things that we're having to figure out, but all in all things are great. Sales have been phenomenal. I've done a lot of extra promotions this month and last month and uh, sales are just through the roof. The one thing that we are still having a interesting and a difficult time with is, is retention. It's something where we're still working on it. Um, we have, we don't, our, it's interesting because you know, our subscribers are growing like, oh, sorry, I almost lost that. Our subscribers are growing like crazy. Our canceled, or the people that are canceling, the percentage has pretty much stayed exactly the same from the time we started to now, which is awesome, and it's not a huge number. But the number that's growing really big, and that's a little bit alarming, and something that we need to work on and focus on, is that pause, the people that are paused. And so what we're doing, we're sort of changing um, some of the, the, the infrastructure and the back end and the layout of the, of the pages um, when you're in your dashboard and we're tweaking and playing around with different things to make it more user friendly to hopefully help people you know, customize their delivery schedule and instead of just pausing. And the other feature that we're working on is a skip function where if you just have enough, you can go in, boop, hit skip, it'll skip a cycle. It won't put you on pause, it'll just skip you. And you can go back in and skip it again or you can say, okay, I'm ready, boop, and hit it and have it come. So we are, uh, we're working on it. And, and this is like a user experience interface type of thing and we're real excited to get that locked down. The other thing we need to lock down is, is um, you know, we need, we need a program. We need some type of, of, of reach out or, or um, I don't know what the, the person would do other than, you know, sort of like an ambassador. Somebody who can go and, and talk and communicate and say, hey, can I help you do X, Y, and Z? Or can we incentivize you to get you back moving and shaking? Because, you know, retention is one of the big issues with, with this subscription model. You know, the upside is that you have people that are subscribers that keep it going, but the other issue is the retention. How many people try it, pause, or cancel? And so we're working that out. It's not a simple fix. It's not a simple solution. And there is a laundry list of development stuff that we need. One of the conversations that we're having is, you know, do we need more bandwidth? Does, does Rob, does Jeremy, do, do our tech team, do, they, do we need more hours? Which means, you know, we need more technical help 
for some of these other little projects that don't take quite as much sort of finessing and massaging like some of the bigger higher level things that Jeremy the man and Rob the man are working on together and so working all that stuff out it's a process though and unfortunately as much as we all want it to be able to just snap our fingers and done it's not something that happens that fast the other issue is that when you change one thing it's sort of like a trickle down effect there are other things that that come into play and so it's like oh let's just do this okay well if you do this how does it affect all these other things um, so that's going on and 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 we're real excited about that and so we're, we're constantly making progress and doing great on the website front the other front that we we talked about last week is I saw the video and we all sort of went over the video for um, from the Guy Bauer sort of creation and it was good it wasn't great though I mean okay so I say that it was really good but there are things that we felt needed to be sort of highlighted more things that we needed to change and so unfortunately it's not it wasn't a you know here it is guys and we were like oh my god it's ready hit the presses let's do this boom which we were all were hoping for including Guy Bauer <clears throat> because you know they do the best job they can and they bring it to us and it's like okay guys and they cross their fingers and hope that we love it we think it's perfect and it has the right branding the right messaging and it's just ready to roll and then they do their their color correcting and and fancying up of the video but there's some things that need tweaking so it's not finished yet but we're working on it all the notes have been delivered to them and they are developing it um some other things just you know we're, we're always looking we're always hiring we are looking to expand our business and so that means we need more hands on deck more high level people to help us with the growth of Tej Hanley and so we, we've got a marketing guy that is coming on from as a contract sort of you know not employed but as a contractor that's going to help with marketing and he is like a a big deal in that industry and Kelly got connected to him somehow like I said Kelly is a man who knows people um, for better or worse he is connected to some really smart people and so that is one of the amazing things about being in business with Kelly is that he's got all these great connections that I don't have that Rob doesn't have and so bringing them together um, the meetings with the consultant God this is there's a lot of stuff to catch you guys up on has 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 been going well we're just trying to there's a lot of stuff I mean there's a lot of balls in the air because of Tish Hanley's growth and and relative success I mean it's almost like an overnight success in the in the sense that we've only been live and selling for a little over a year and we're facing problems and and growing pains not like huge problems that aren't aren't overcomable but you know we're, we're facing some growing pains that businesses as they start to become successful are facing and um, that's okay but it's frustrating at times but you know nobody said this was going to be easy so we all you know buckle in and and just make it happen but now I'd like to get to some of your incredible questions last vlog I mentioned that recipe for men my the deodorant that I really like um, doesn't have aluminum and I'm wrong it does have aluminum somebody uh, corrected that and I actually look but I went home like crap I got to address that the other thing I need to address a lot of questions about the acne system I was wrong in last vlog and I'd like to clear that up I said that there were going to be three different acne level or three different systems like level one level two level three there's not there's just one there's going to be a level one acne system certain specific core products that have certain specific ingredients in them and so they are being developed our chemist is still working on formulations making sure stability is right levels are all right it, it a lot goes into it so we hope to be launching that next year early next year but it's not ready yet but it's coming and there's only one level next question a lot of comments about keeping it simple don't go body wash don't go deodorant just stick with skincare and face care um, and somebody actually had an idea of if you're going to do some type of body wash deodorant or other products just have another basically like a sister company or a brother company to Tej Hanley like you know body by Tej or something like that which I think could be kind of cool um, and it would be a different model it, it probably would be some type of subscription but once again things like body wash what's going to set it apart when you can go to you know the the drugstore the grocery store and buy you know body wash 
for three bucks or five bucks and it's a big thing and and it's super heavy to ship and so there are some other products that might be down the pipeline but I think that's a really great idea what do you guys think something by like body by tease or something yeah I think that's pretty solid great idea see you guys are smarter than us much smarter that's why we come to you and ask you all these questions Rick's Run Outdoors has a lot of questions in one, but one thing that he said is, I suspended my tige and I have not received the comeback email. Is there a reason why you stopped sending those out? Yeah, because the new platform that we're on with Shopify doesn't support the same way or the, the email thing where it's an auto email that when you're paused for X number of weeks or days, it sends you out a, hey, come back to us, please. Would you like some more? You're not getting any handsomer without us. Um, you know, it, it doesn't support that. So that's something that, that is one of the reasons why it's super frustrating and the time is of the essence to get these pauser campaigns back. We don't have one right now, which is an issue and which is frustrating, but it, it is what it is. We got we to gotta fix things as they come off. Incredible question um, by Shashang Niji. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I guess this is more of a personal for personal interest, but why don't you expand in the various outlets such as Ulta and Sephora? I understand they, they undercut price margins a lot, but wouldn't the sale revenue provide funds for advertising for the brand based on various products? The trend now seems lean towards stronger marketing more than the product quality itself. Um, what's your input? Great question. Retail is a bitch in terms of everything that you've got to deal with, everything you've got to do. True story. Uh, last year, I was approached by Target to sell Pete and Pedro in Target. And I was like, ooh, this sounds like, this sounds awesome, right? I'm going to be at distribution all over the place. And right now, Pete and Pedro, for the most part, is just online. I do sell it in, in stores, but it's, it's barber shops. And so it, it's, it's small. It's nothing, you know, major. Um, when they sent me over the requirements for what goes into actually selling in retail and what you need in terms of inventory, how they handle returns, when you get paid, because that's the other thing. A lot of places, they either will pay you when the inventory sells through or you've got to provide all this, this inventory for all of their locations or if they do a test location, you've got to provide the inventory at your cost. And then, you know, maybe 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days later, they'll pay you. And if it doesn't sell through or and they don't sell it, they want to send it back to you and they don't want to pay you. And so you have so much capital, so much money tied up in, in inventory and stocking this that you've just got to have enough money to sort of sit back and wait, excuse me, and hope. Speaking of hope, I'm hoping for some coffee. It's a logistical nightmare. And so one of the most beautiful things about being an online business is you don't have to deal with a lot of the headaches that are associated with going in retail. They hammer you on, on pricing and they beat you up to get you down and, and they're a big bully. And that's one of the things that Walmart does. That's one of the things that all of these big, big retailers. Another thing is that I have inside knowledge from my buddy over at the grooming lounge. They used to actually be in Sephora, or was it Ulta? Ulta. And, um, and they pulled everything out. They said they, it just really didn't sell. The majority of people that go to an Ulta or a Sephora are women. And so that's the other thing. Now, the place that I've seen a lot of men's skincare is Nordstrom's. Nordstrom's does carry a few, uh, a few different um, lines. I think uh, Jack Black is a big one and I think they might carry something else. Maybe uh, Brickle. I don't know. Brickle supposedly the, na the natural which is the biggest budget crap which we'll talk about. I actually just did a video about um, natural grooming products. Worth the money or worthless crap and it's, uh, it's a little bit more of a rant but maybe next week. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. The difference between nat that's what we're going to talk about next week. <laughs> we're going to talk about the difference between natural and um, not technically all natural because it's all a scam. Like, like if you have like one or two natural ingredients and natural just means that it came from the land or the sea, like any ingredient, you can throw like naturally derived like on the lake. It's, it's the biggest scam ever. And some of these products are going real 
they're playing loose and fast with the truth because when I actually started looking in at this one company specifically was all like in the back of the label it's like we don't use anything that's not natural and I started looking at the ingredients and I'm like wait a second and I google search one I'm like uh, this causes like skin burns and used in cleaners and like it's not natural but I'm not mad at them because you really have to decide I, I need to save that save it to next time Tish Hanley, we use a mix of natural, botanical, synthetic, amazing ingredients. But the result and, and the question you have to ask yourself, do you want it to be 100% natural or do you want it to work? Your choice. My choice is I want the crap to work as long as they're not hurting any animals, which Tish Hanley never tests on animals. We spend thousands of dollars to test on humans. But hopefully that answer, answered your question. There's so much logistical challenge, it's expensive, and quite frankly, the profit is much better when you sell direct. The other thing is you can, you know, we've cut out the middleman, and so we can offer crazy high quality at a amazing price. Once you go retail, you need more. It, 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 it's a nightmare. Last question. <clears throat> Oh, my voice is going. Last question by Tyler Digiovine. Sorry, I'm really bad at pronunciation apparently. Um, Alpha, do you have any advice for the legality side of the business? I'm looking to get a startup going, but I want to cover my behind. Good, good, good desire. Um, and I'm not very well educated on the topic, even after extensive research. Thank you, you're doing amazing, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much, brother. Here's what I will tell you, is talk to as many, not as many, pick one. Talk to an attorney, um, talk to your accountant. You know, how you set up and structure your business is, is part, of the, part of the process. You know, whether or not you are a sole proprietorship, an LLC, a single member LLC, a C Corp, like different companies ha and different entities have different protections and different, you know, perks. But that being said, there are other things that, that you may need to set up in terms of protecting your behind. Talk to an attorney. Attorneys are one of those things that, that everybody hates spending money on the, the legal side of things because it's not sexy, right? It's not fun. You know, like, it's not like you spend the money and it's like, oh, look at these new glasses. It's like you spend the money just to protect your ass. But I am here to tell you from experience, it is worth spending the money and getting a good attorney is is worth its weight in gold and for nothing else is you know even like if it's just like peace of mind you know that you're protected because you know people are so crazy people are looking to you know sue anybody for anything these days and the reality is that you can sue anybody for anything these days but making sure you have your ducks in the row is is the best thing and, and don't rely on legal zoom you know it's good for certain things but when it comes to your business, AKA your baby, you've got too much invested, you've got too much at stake, and you need to make sure that you are protected. Period. End of story. And on that note, I think we're gonna wrap it up. But next time, gentlemen, we're talking about natural versus sort of natural, some natural ingredients. What the hell is the difference and does it even really matter? Um, because I did a video that is pretty awesome. <laughs> and so I've got some research behind me now. Plus the fact that I own a skincare company and a hair care company. Uh, guys, that's it. If you have not tried Tish Hanley, I don't know why. Um, it is incredible. More and more testimonials come flooding in. It's incredible. Because here's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm a good salesperson, right? I'm really good at selling stuff. Not just this, but pretty much anything. I can sell. But what is really amazing is when you sell a product that you believe in as much as I believe in Tish Hanley, and when people buy it, they love it as much as they do. I mean, that, it doesn't get any better than that. And so, you know, it's, it's incredible. And that's why I can never promote anything that I don't believe in, because people will let me know. In the world of, of criticism, critique, and everybody having a voice on the internet, you can't afford not to walk the walk. And so at Teach Hanley, we not only walk the walk, we do spin jumps and dance all over its ass. <laughs> Gentlemen, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Any business related comment or question down in the comments. If you have anything or any questions regarding your Teach subscription, info at teach.com.